You feeling old? <laughs> Are you feeling Not old, really. Sam? Not really. Um, I, I, I walk around the locker room and I'm like, I remember when I was a freshman looking at seniors and thinking that they looked really old. I, I just don't feel that way. <laughs> keep keep that uh, feeling. Do you remember the first UT home game you went to as a kid? Ooh. And what, what went through your mind? No, that, that's <laughs> yeah. too hard. I, I really don't. Yeah. And are you, are you the sentimental type? And are you going to rip up some field turf as a memento or anything? No. No, I I think it would be selfish of me to to not be focused on the task at hand, understanding the the magnitude of this game and I will be as focused as possible on, on the game plan to win for my team. And any rituals you have that you'll have the day of the game or anything special being your last home game? No. Just, just wanna win. <laughs> Thanks. Dennis, go ahead. Sam, uh, coach talked about you being a stabilizer and he couldn't say enough good things about you, obviously, the other day. How fitting is it that you go into your senior day in the most chaotic, unstable year and you actually control your own destiny when it comes to your hopes for a Big 12 title? Yeah, it, it's certainly fitting. Uh, I think over the last you know, four years, we've, as a program, we've been through just about everything, the highs, the lows, um, adversity, close games, not close games, just really every, every possible scenario, um, adversity on and off the field, just a lot of different things. So uh, I think it's only fitting of um, everything that's gone on and, and I wouldn't want it any other way. Yeah, and, and a follow-up, do you remember at Westlake what your goals were for the 40 acres, how they maybe didn't actually align with what you want, which is like most of us. Um, but but the, the, I guess the hidden blessing of your journey here, something that's, that's been really meaningful for you the, the past four years. Yeah, I, I think my mentality uh, when I was at Westlake was I wanted to come in and, uh, you know, leave the University of Texas football program better than it was when I got here. And whatever that may look like, whether that be in the locker room, on the field, off the field. That was just kind of my mentality. So um, still got work to do and still have a great opportunity in front of us. Anwar, go ahead. Hey, Sam, um, I got two questions uh, for you. Let me ask you the first one. Um, I think we all operate under the assumption that this is your last game, but you do have another year of eligibility if you want it. So I'm just kind of curious is, are you, will this be your last year or and will you try to pursue the NFL or are you considering coming back? I, I haven't, I haven't given much thought to that at all. Um, I'm just, just focused on, on beating Iowa state. So you haven't thought at all about the potential of coming back at all next year. Well, I, I, I've you haven't seen your, you got a senior bowl invite in front of you. So, you know what I'm saying? That's why, I, that's why I'm asking that question. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. Um, it's, I think I'll know further down the road um, just because just focusing on, focusing on this season. Okay. My second question to you then, Sam, is, you know, when you came in, uh, you didn't have the advantage of having an upperclassman to learn from, right? So you could just sit and learn for a year or two. I'm, I'm kind of curious about what those trials and errors were like for you and what you now teach some of the younger guys like the Hudson Cars, the Quindens, um, who are in that room uh, and Casey, not to forget him, now that you know that you've been through what you had to learn the hard way. Yeah, there, there were a lot of things I had to learn the hard way. Um, and um, so there's a lot, a lot of different things that come up during the season that I try to highlight for for the younger guys, um, whether that be a read on the field or um, the way that the way that the preparation should go throughout the week, um, how to read a defense, how to look at what what helps me looking at a defense, or whether it be off the field too, um, you know how to deal with the pressure of of playing at Texas and um, what it takes off the field to 
you know, be, be a leader on the team and then off the field as well. So there's a lot of different things um, that constantly, um, if something pops up, I try to highlight or, um, you know, point out for them. Um, and I'm just trying to help them. They're obviously incredible, incredibly talented players. And um, I, I hope that they can be the best to ever come through Texas. Roger, you're up. Hey, Sam, you, you committed before your junior year. So suddenly you were not just Westlake quarterback, but UT commit, you're in town. It's almost like you've been part of this program for six years. What's the, the journey been like from the kid with the picture that we've all seen to, you know, the anticipation of Sam Ellinger to being basically a, a four-year starter here at Texas? It's been an absolute blessing. Um, I, I wouldn't want anything to be any differently. I think that uh, I love this university and I, I've loved playing here. And then also just off the field um, with, with the relationships that I've built, the perspective that I've learned, uh, the relationships that I've built, it's, it's really special. And um, wouldn't want to do it at any other place in the University of Texas. And I, I look forward to, to finishing out the season the right way. And then you've been part of some tangible change, uh, the, the field, the name change. And then Friday, the, the Julius Whittier statue, you guys will walk by it going into the stadium. What does that mean? What does he mean to, to you and your teammates? Yeah, it's incredible. Uh, Julius Whittier was a trailblazer for the University of Texas football program. And I can't wait to see, can't wait to see the statue. Brian, go ahead. Yes, yeah, Sam, you know, typically uh, years down the road, guys will say that the things they remember the most are things that happened off the field, in the locker room, you know, in the meeting room, in the hotels, stuff that we, stuff that we will never see. And, and I wonder, the PG rated version, are there any good stories of things that jump out at you as, is uh, man, I'll never forget the time this guy did this. Man, I'm sure there's way too many of them. Um, or what just, you know, just, just, just everybody always says being with the guys, you know, how, how does that feel? You know, and um, things that when you think about that, what, what comes to mind? I, I think of, of, this arc my class um just everything that we've gone through and everything that we've we've seen um, and been a part of you know uh, it's been really special and and i'll definitely remember these relationships and experiences for the rest of my life mm -hmm. and then and then secondly you know I, I don't think that any of us ever truly appreciate uh the pressure that's on people that are thrust forward as the face of the program um, how has it been just, you know, living life? You know, you have, you have to come on here with us every week for four years. You have to watch what you say. You have to hold back at times. You can't tell us what you really think. Other times people in public expect that of you. Just how do you describe that to a random outsider? It's an, it's an interesting life. Um, yeah, it is. I don't even know how to describe it to you, honestly. Um, it's a blessing for sure. And there are a lot of beautiful things that come with it. And um, I wouldn't want any, any other way. Joe, go ahead. So kind of thinking along that, just whenever you make or you envision a highlight reel in your head of your career at Texas, what's the first play or first moment that's going to lead off that highlight reel for Sam Ellinger? I would say that USC game um, when I was running around out there like a chicken with, it, with its head cut off and somehow managed to move the ball down the field with two minutes left and uh, that that rollout touchdown to Armani Foreman would probably be the first one. Cedric, you're up. Uh, hey, Sam, two questions. Uh, one, um, 
what would old Sam tell young Sam if he could that would have made these that would have made these four years a little bit more easier for you? Ooh. I don't know if there's one statement that could they could <laughs> um I'll take two. Um <laughs> uh, That's really tough. No advice. It's just, so, it's so tough because there's like, in every area I would have provided advice. Like, mm -hmm. um, so it's hard to, it's hard to just choose one. Um, I would say on the field, um, Preparation is key. If you can be the most prepared player on the field, you'll put yourself in a position for success. Um, and then I would say off the field, um, use, the, use the adversity and challenges that present themselves um, as life lessons and learn from them and grow from there. Oh, and, and one more, Sam. Um, who's going to be a blubbering mess in pregame, and who are you going to have to pull it, make sure they pull it together because there's a tackle football game to be played, and there's going to be a lot of emotions flying around early? I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I think that everybody, for the most part, will, will, will do a good job of holding it together. Um, I think we'll all be very focused. Chip, go ahead. Sam, um, how do you hope to be remembered and in your time at Texas? And what, um, what are you most proud of in your four years here? I hope to be remembered as quarterback and, and leader that led his teammates and his team the best that he could and um, try to make others around him better, all for the love of the game and the love of the University of Texas. And I'm most proud of, I'm most proud of the way that our team has continued to fight through adversity um, with everything that's been presented to us from whether that be losses or um, outside noise, whatever it may be, we've, we've never splintered. We've always just stayed together um, as a group, um, as players and uh, that, that bond and love is real. Thanks. Marcus, go ahead. Yes, Sam. Um, are there any either, you know, older players or coaches um, that stick out to you over the last four years that were your biggest mentors or teachers? Yeah, I would definitely say um, Colt and VY were definitely the most helpful in providing advice of what to expect and, um, you know, just, just continual encouragement and um, advice. And um, so that's been really great. And then um, actually Coach, Coach Brown has been really uh, helpful over the past few years of just anytime he's around or whether it's shooting me a text and offering encouragement. I, th I think he knows what it's like to, to be at the University of Texas. And um, I really appreciate him for the encouragement and support that he's provided as well. Kirk, go Sam, do you regret what you said on the stage in New Orleans? And how often do you get reminded of that? You know, I don't regret it because I learned from it. Um, and, you know, it's one of those things that I'll look back and be like, 
that was pretty funny. You know, <laughs> everyone expects, you know, I was, I was still a teenager. So you can expect something like that from a teenager, uh, but it was a great learning moment for me. Um, and definitely don't have any regret about it now. Would I do it again? Probably not. <laughs> uh, but I don't regret it. Last one, Chip. Sam, when was the last time you talked to uh, your buddy Shane Bouchelle? And have you all reminisced about how this is both y'all's, uh, you know, senior finale? I talked to Shane a few weeks ago. Um, he's obviously continuing to kill it and um, I have a lot to thank him for um, throughout this journey as well because he was such a positive influence in my life and um, taught me a lot of very valuable things about you know playing quarterback and also being a person um, but no we haven't we haven't reminisced about anything um, I think we're both just very hyper focused on on the moment in front of us you when you think of your career and, and start looking back on it what's the what's the one moment that kind of leads the way or sticks out when you when you think back on your Texas career it's like one of the best uh, of your time at Austin um I think it was in 2018 when we went on that winning streak uh I think there was about like six games in a row seven games somewhere around there and like the funny thing about it I kind of always uh remember us losing those like back-to-back -back games and being able to back, like bounce back and make it to the Big 12 game. That was something that I always look back in my Texas career and said, well, I was glad to be a part of something uh, that was able to like turn things around and actually uh, have a successful season and to make a pretty good impact on that team as well. That's something I'll always look back on. Dennis, go ahead. Yeah, piggybacking on, on that idea, how important is it to you that your senior day is not just going to be a pomp and circumstance, a hug, but you're actually still playing with control, uh, your own destiny for a Big 12 title? Um, I think it's really important, uh, personally for me, but I think it's also important for the senior class, uh, all the ups and downs that we've been on. Uh, something that we always talked about, you know, before stepping on campus is to uh, leave this football program better than how like to leave it like better than how we found it. And uh, what we mean by that is uh, we want to, to, you know, ride out on top, you know, big 12 champions. But uh, as I said before, we got to take this week by week and we'll meet our destination if we take care of business. Thanks. Kirk, go ahead. Uh, TQ, uh, who was the first teammate you met when you reported on campus as a freshman, and do you have any special freshman memory that's funny or memorable that you always keep? Um, I'm trying to think. Um, somebody, somebody that I always knew, like in the recruiting process, was uh, Sam Ellinger. Uh, somebody that always kind of recruited me to come here because we played each other a few times in high school. All right. Somebody that I actually met first stepping on campus was Derek Kerstetter. Uh, and he's uh, still one of my good friends all the way up to the senior year. And uh, it's been so, such a ride with all these guys in the senior class, uh, uh, even Sam Cosby included, because he's still a classmate, even though he redshirted. And uh, just, just being with these guys these past four years has been a, an amazing experience. And I'm glad that um, I was able to do, like, be on this ride with them. It's, I'm really, really blessed that I was able to do that and be with them. And if you had to do it over again, would you change anything? Would you do anything different? Um, you like to look back on things and say, oh, I wish I would have did this. I wish I would have did that. But I just have to be blessed and to be a part of this experience with them. And uh, I'm, re I'm really, really happy that I made the decision to come here. Thanks. Chip, go ahead. TQ, who's, <clears throat> who's the funniest guy in that 17 – recruiting class um who are you going to remember maybe not for reasons that we would think uh, your recruiting class i know he's somewhere around here somewhere around here still but probably uh sam ellinger 
Uh, he's he's much more of a funny guy than you think he is. Uh, just his subtle jokes here and there. Uh, just uh, the energy that he brings uh, every single day. Uh, always being positive, always having a smile on his face. Uh, that's something people uh, don't see on a day-to-day -day basis, and it definitely rubs off on everybody. How how do you want to be remembered? Um, I want to be remembered well by my teammates. Uh, I wanted to. I always wanted to be respected, and that, I guess that's something I feel like I earned throughout the four years that I've been here by being named captain. And that, that's something that was very important to me just because the aspect of, you know, my teammates voted me captain. Uh, uh, and as well as having the respect of the coaches as well, someone that came in and never gave up and worked day in and day out. That's something that I hold, you know, close to my heart. And uh, and that's something that I pride myself on. What would a, mean, what would a win on Friday mean to you and to these seniors? Step closer to – to what we want to do for this program and how we want to leave it just a step closer. Then there's a couple more steps after that to get to where we want to be. Roger, you're up. TQ, got to ask you about this Iowa State offense uh, versatility. Obviously, running back, quarterback are, are so dangerous. What kind of jumps off the tape uh, when you begin your preparation? Um, I think that uh, 12 and 13 personnel jumps off jumps off uh, right in your face because not a lot of the people in our conference do it. And it's definitely definitely a big switch up uh, playing all these spread offenses then uh, to come in, they come into a game with a team that runs 12 and 13 and to have such a, a great uh, tight end core, I think is, uh, that's, that's what really jumps out at me. Uh, they have big strong tight ends that love the block and they also are pretty talented when going to go catch the football. And uh, I think I think this is going to be a, a very physical, physical game, and I think we're going to have to be very disciplined with our run fits. As an older guy, do you think back to who who kind of mentored you and how you've taken that that torch and passed it along to the younger uh, defensive tackles, and maybe as an older guy, appreciate what what they did for you and your obligation to, to pass it on? Yeah, I, I can uh, say several names. I can say Puna Ford. I can say. Uh, Chris Nelson, I can say Charles and Minnie here, I can say Malcolm Roach. Uh, all these guys taught me something uh, each year that, you know, they, they came and they gone. Uh, each year, I feel like uh, a piece of their game rubbed off on me in some type of way. Uh, and I'm glad that I was able to be here with them. And I'm glad that they were able to teach me a few things while they were here. And then how cool is it to be part of the program that's instituted some change? Friday, you're going to have the Julius Whittier statue unveiled. You guys are going to walk by it. What does it mean to you and your team to, to see that and what he's meant to this program in college football? Um, yeah, first of all, uh, I want to give thanks to him for uh, being a trailblazer because, you know, back in the day, it wasn't always as easy for, you know, African-American athletes to come out here and play. And I'm glad that he created the opportunity for many people, uh, many African-Americans like myself, to you know, step onto the campus and to compete, and I think that's the real important thing that he was the person that you know trailblazed that he was the one that created the opportunity for me to be there. So all I can do is give my thanks, and I'm really glad that this decision was made and that the statue is being revealed. Tedrick, you're up. TQ, what does it say about the uh, mental makeup of of your leadership in that locker room? after dropping those games, OU and TCU, to stay in there and still have a chance to get where you guys want to be? Um, I think I think it says a lot, not only uh, not only speaking of my leadership, but I feel like anyone with a C on their chest, uh, anyone that's a, a, a veteran of some kind, I feel like we really try to help the team stay the course because this is something that we've seen before, as I mentioned before in 2018. Uh, same thing happened. We dropped two games and we bounced back and were able to make it to the Big 12 championship game. And I don't know, uh, the big thing is, it's not to always listen to the outside, like the outside noise. Uh, that's something that we've always been told a lot is not listen to the outside noise because all you got to do is keep your head down and work. Uh, the only thing you got to do is get better and better each week. And 
uh, the Big 12 Conference is very competitive. If you keep getting better each week and you keep getting those wins, uh, anything is possible. I asked Sam the same question. Um, who do you expect to be an emotional mess in pregame and who are you going to have to shake to make sure that they're ready to play football? There's going to be, be a few tears shed before the game. Um, uh, I think, I think I'm, I'm going to be pretty emotional. You know, uh, it being the last one, DKR for me, uh, is going to be a pretty, it's going to be a, a hectic game, but I know I got the mental makeup to, you know, focus in on the game. And uh, I got that, I got that drive in my head, uh, a game closer. So uh, I think we're all going to be fine. I think we're going to be able to bounce back and get our head in the game. Got time for two last ones. Start with Kirk. Uh, in your four years, Taekwon, who's the toughest guy you've had to go up against? Sam Cosmo. How about an opponent? Huh? How about an opponent? Who's the toughest guy? I don't want to deal with this guy anymore, ever again. Um, I would say I would never want to deal with him again. I probably would want to see him again at some point. But uh, uh, somebody that comes out to me, probably Orlando Brown. Uh, he was pretty. He was a pretty uh, tough tackle to go against. Uh, faced him earlier in my career, and I would like to meet up and match up with him one day again. And is any of the senior going to give a speech uh, before the game on uh, Friday? And are you going to take anything uh, as a souvenir, like steal your locker or something? Um, I, really, I don't think I'm going to steal my locker or anything like that. <laughs> But um, I, I don't know. It's uh, whoever wants to speak and whoever has something on their heart. Uh, anyone can uh, go up there and give the speech to the team because uh, uh, for a lot of people, it's going to be their last time in GKR. And uh, I don't know. It's, it's going to be a tough time, but it's also going to be a happy time uh, going out there and competing with each other. Thanks. Thank last, you. One, last one. Go ahead, Chip. TQ, how, how good is the Texas run defense right now after shutting down Chuba Hubbard and, and Letty Brown? Um, I think we're pretty good, but there's always room for improvement. And I definitely think that we got our confidence going now. I definitely think we can, uh, we can, really, we can really go out there and compete with anyone right now. I think it's uh, the matter of being disciplined and uh, playing with each other. And I think that's what it's all about. And I think we're going to go out there and compete and get it done. How, how is Iowa State's run game different from what you've seen? Um, something that we always don't see around this conference is a lot of 12 and 13 personnel, uh, the way they use their tight ends. Uh, I don't think it, I think it's pretty unique to the conference because uh, that's not, no one else does that like that. And, uh, and they, they're pretty physical and they love running the ball. And uh, they they're, they're a great team, uh, one of the best teams I've seen. And in terms of Sam Ellinger, mm -hmm. how, how, you know, what are your thoughts on him and, and his legacy? Uh, what are people going to remember him for in, in his time at Texas? For sure, just uh, his competitive, like, edge that he played with. He's a heck of a, heck of a competitor, and he always is going out and playing his best and just play, playing to our standard and just being the best he can be. So, it's just awesome to see his leadership as well. He's a heck of a leader and he cares about his guys and wants us to see us do be successful. So it's been fun playing with a guy like him for the past four years. Joe, you're up. Derek, with uh, this being your last home game uh, at DKR, what from these past four years, if there's one moment uh, in your career that stands out, what's, what's number one on the highlight list for you, whether home or away? Shoot. Um, Probably that USC win was a lot of fun. Um, that was a big win for us. It was, it was a, we went down, I believe, like 14 to zero and came back and won. And that was a special moment and just a lot of cool things with our teammates. So I like that one a lot. Dennis, you're up. Kind of along the same line, but in the bigger scope of it, do you take pride in, you know, Coach Herman was talking about Sam as a stabilizer, a program stabilizer, but I think that goes for your whole class. Do you take pride in, leaving it so much better than you did when you got here for sure man and 
we came in as a class that wasn't super like highly recruited. We weren't just all big name guys and just a lot of us have came in and played. So I think that was something special just seeing like we really wanted to see each other be successful. And we came in just kind of with our heads down, didn't didn't care what people said about us. So I think it was just fun seeing guys like Sam Cosme, who was a very low recruit, come in and just be do so well. So it's been fun just seeing guys like him and TQ and all these different guys that were somewhat recruited like TQ, but just like be coming and be so successful. So. Travis, go ahead. Well, Derek, we'll just keep traveling down memory lane here. Um, for you back in the recruiting process, you know, you're committed to Oklahoma State for a while. The Texas offer comes in pretty late. Um, can you just kind of reflect on your journey on, on how you ended up at Texas and, um, you know, what it, you know, looks like now and how that decision has impacted your life? Yeah, man. I mean, I always dreamed of playing at Texas. I think many people have. So um, just when I got that Texas offer, I knew right away that was where I was going to go. And just being able to represent my home state has been something special. So just for me, just to reflect on these four years, it's just a dream come true, just being able to wear the born orange and white. So I've just loved every second of them. I'm thankful for my time here. So. Kirk, go ahead. Uh, Derek, are you guys going to break bread this week and reminisce at all, you and the other seniors? Are y'all going to do anything as a group? Who knows? Yeah, no, we don't have anything planned, but just trying to go out and be 1-0 and will be special. So that will be the big emphasis. Do you remember uh, checking in as a freshman? Do you remember like the first one or two guys in your class that you saw and became friends with? Yeah, no, for sure. Um, yeah, me and Sammy have always just kind of clicked, just being the only two offensive linemen in our class. And then TQ's always been a guy that's – we've kind of been the three amigos, you know what I mean? So we've just always been really good friends and just always kind of had that click together. So, Do you remember ever, you know, talking about, well, by the time we leave, we'll have done this and, you know, <laughs> think back that far? Yeah, no, I can't think back that far, but <laughs> – you're always just trying to be the best and do the best for this place that we can. So, yeah. And lastly, the Iowa State defensive front, uh, how do they compare to others y'all played this year? They're a good defensive line, man. They play hard, they're physical. So, it'll be a fun test for us. And just uh, we got to go out and focus on being the best we can up front. So, just protect Sam and run the football. So, big emphasis. Thank you. Yep. Roger, you're up. Hey Derek, you're you're part of a program that's that's really gotten some change. The, the field name, and now you're going to have the statue, Julius Whittier. You're going to see that Friday. What does it mean to, for that? And what is in your eyes? What has he meant to to this program? Uh, it's it's been cool to see all the changes that have happened. It's been special just to be part of a group that helped that. So um, it's going to be special just being able to bring on something like that to this this campus. So it'll be cool. Um, very thankful for the athletic department helping us do that. So, yeah, it's, it's just going to be exciting to see it finally there and in its place. So, 